and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your sweet presence in our midst this morning. Lord, how we appreciate thy great salvation today. Lord, that our heart bleeds when we see. Lord, that so few are being saved today. I mean your salvation, Lord. God, it's heartbreaking to see so many ways that man has devised to go to heaven. Lord, and it's heartbreaking to look in thy word and see it straight is the way that leadeth to real life and few there be that find it. Oh, Lord, I pray, God, don't let this world come to an end and just one here and one there enter in, Lord. God, I pray that you'd have mercy upon the people. Lord, give them repentance, God, to the knowledge of another truth, Lord Jesus. They may enter into God's ark today by thy provided way. Oh, God, stretch forth thine hand, Lord. Let the glory of God be revealed, Lord. Who that thou moved in days gone by and reveal thy salvation, O God. Save the people, Lord, from their unbelief, God, that they may enter in, Lord. Our heart bleeds, God, for the people, Lord. Save their souls. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that thy great love and grace will be extended. God, tender mercy, have mercy upon the people of this world, Lord. Save thy people, Lord. Seal your believers and show thyself that thou art alive forevermore, Father. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come in this building this morning, God. Pour out your spirit upon our thirsty souls. Our soul longeth for the living God. For hungry, Lord. Feed us and give us drink of thy spirit in Jesus' name, God. Amen. You may be seated. Happy to be with you this morning. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus for his love and grace, his tender mercy, and his love and kindness. He's revealing his word in these last days. And there is a way of salvation. There is a way that we can be saved and enter in. If you, all you would need is a desire to be saved. God loves you. He loves you. God loves Oh. God didn't send another person to die for you. He came himself. God came himself and died. He never sent another person. He came himself. And his name is Jesus. Jesus died for you and I. Why shouldn't we live for him? Why shouldn't we die out to ourselves? My God, we ain't worth nothing anyway. What are you anyway? Wrap a $300 suit around you and a, a piece of fur around your neck. What are you anyway when that life leaves you? Worth 50 cents. Chemicals worth 50 cents. That's all you worth. But you got a soul down in there that God himself died for. Hallelujah. Why don't men and women repent and accept Christ as a personal Savior? The devil has bound people. Let me tell you, friend, there's no words in the vocabulary to explain how terrible hell is in a lake of fire. Trying to say there ain't no such thing as hell in a lake of fire. Right down in this earth, there's a lake of fire burning right now waiting on you. Amen. Amen. There's somebody right here this morning who got it saved. They had just accepted Amen. I feel it in my heart. That ain't me talking. That ain't me talking. That's the Lord speaking right to you. You know who it is. 
Let's raise our hands and ask God to save this person. My God, stretch out thy love and grace and give extension to this soul and save that soul that's near hell this morning. Oh, God, I feel that there's a soul on the brink of hell this morning, God. Save that soul, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Save my Lord, God, save that soul. In the name of the Lord God, I repeat every bit of unbelief. Oh, God, let that person save, take a hold of my salvation. Oh, Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, God. God said, my spirit don't always strive with man. Oh, my friend, this morning, if you feel the Holy Spirit knocking your heart, don't turn that down. Next week, you may be laying beside the road with your throat cut from one end to the other. You don't know when you'll go. You may be as healthy as can be this morning, but maybe before the sun goes down the day. You may be gone from this world. <laughs> the skin worms are right in your flesh right now, crawling around. They're waiting there right for you right now. As soon as that life, breath, spirit that God gave you, as soon as that leaves your body, them skin worms right there, ready to start to work on you, and they'll eat you up. And then your bones will lay there, and then in a few years, if the Lord tarries, there'll be nothing but dust. Thank God that he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. And he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He is seated up on high. Send back his Holy Spirit that we might be saved this morning. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. Amen. I'm mean, thankful for God's salvation. I hear those words destroy this body in three days I'll raise it up. Amen. I lay my life down. No man takes it from me. I lay it down and I'll take it up again. Brother Eddie took it up again and he took it up and set it on the right hand of God and it's up there making intercession for me this morning. And because he lives, I live also. Amen. You can have the whole world Give me the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I love him this morning. I wish I could preach to the world this morning about the Lord Jesus. I wish I could preach it to Russia. I wish I could preach it to the White House this morning. I wish I could preach it to every politician in the country. He's wonderful. There ain't nothing in the world worth nothing but him. Take Jesus Christ out of it. You ain't got nothing but a putrefying soul. Take Jesus Christ out of it. You ain't worth getting up in the morning. Get dressed. Amen. My Lord. I believe the coming of the Lord Jesus is close at hand. I believe it won't be very long to stretch forth his hand and do great and mighty things for his people like he did in days gone by. need to call him on the scene this morning. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah 53. Uh. I don't know what I'll preach on. Amen. Glory to God. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. I believe he's here, though. Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall go up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man, of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. 
He was despised and we esteemed him not. Oh. I'd like to just start out on a little subject here on who hath believed the report. Yes. That's right. Who yes. hath yes. believed the report? That's a good question. Oh, God. Who hath believed the report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Hallelujah. God's arm is his salvation. So we could say to who hath believed the report of the prophets and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom is it revealed? Notice over in Isaiah 59 and 16 it says, And his arm, let's read that, Isaiah 59 and 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him. His arm brought him salvation. Who hath believed the report as to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Notice over in Matthew the 13th chapter it, when Jesus Christ was bringing forth the words of eternal life Nobody didn't understand him. Amen. He was bringing forth God's salvation. He was the arm of the Lord. But to whom was it revealed to? He was the report of all the prophets of 4,000 years had brought the report by their prophecy that there was coming salvation. God's salvation was coming upon the earth. There would come a time when great grace would be upon the earth and God would reveal his salvation to mankind. He would reveal his provided way that we might be saved. 4,000 years of prophets prophesying. Amen. Giving report after report after report after report. 4,000 years. A virgin shall conceive. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Report after report after report of 4,000 years. All of the report reports was pointing to one thing, Jesus Christ. God's salvation revealed through Jesus Christ. And the question that the prophet Isaiah brings out here, who hath believed our report? Who is it that's going to believe our report? We've reported faithfully that God, before he destroys mankind and the earth, he's going to reveal his salvation in the last days. Report after report of the coming of the just one, the coming of the holy one, and he would be our righteousness. He would be our justification. He would be our sanctification. He would be our glory. He would be our holiness. He'd take all of our sins upon himself and bear our iniquities and our transgressions. In our wickedness, and our sins, he had taken them up on his own shoulders and bear them to Golgotha's hill and there die a terrible death for you and I. So that you and I might become the righteousness of Christ. We who had no holiness might have the holiness of God himself. And he did it all and sealed the salvation by his blood. And the prophet Isaiah cried out, and said, Who hath believed our report? And to who are those people that the arm of the Lord will be revealed to? Hallelujah. There stood God's salvation, and it came so humble. Amen. God's salvation come out of a stable wrapped in a swaddling cloth, raised up in Nazareth, and he was called the Nazarene. He had no form of comeliness. There was no beauty about him. He wasn't six foot four and shoulders as big as a barn. He never had 18 inch biceps and a big thick neck, big beautiful blue eyes and wavy hair. He was just a homely, plain type of a little fella. Made his living and supported his family by being a carpenter. But there the prophet said, he shall grow up before God as a tender plant. He'll come up as a root out of the dry ground. And it said, when you see God's salvation, it won't be all beautiful. It won't be down there in a great big orifice of a building, $15,000 organ, $15,000 piano, million and a half stone building wrapped around it. 
It won't be that way. But it'll be down in a man. Yes, the way my salvation will be hidden in some human being. No wonder the prophet cried out, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? In other words, who is it that's going to get a revelation of God's salvation in the end time? Who is it that's going to do it? Who's going to believe our report? And to whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? God's arm is God's salvation. Who is it that's going to understand and see his salvation revealed? He cried out when his salvation was bringing forth. Jesus Christ was bringing forth the revelation of God, bringing forth God's plan of salvation, and it was in a parable and he didn't understand it. And so thou speakest in riddles. We don't understand thee. Speakest plainly. He said it's given unto you to know the plan of salvation given unto you. It's given unto the children to know God's plan of salvation. It's given unto you to know the mystery of how to be saved. But to them that are without, it is not given. They cannot see God's arm of salvation. They cannot hear the report. When I think of Moses down in Egypt, going down in Egypt as God's provided way, God getting ready to reveal His arm of salvation through Moses. There was the people of God down in Egypt. They was the people of God, but they was out of the promised land. Amen. They was out of the promised land. They were lost down in Egypt, out of the promised land. And as long as you're out of the promised land, you can never be blessed of God. Amen. That's why that we don't have the great apostolic power that's in the church today. It's because the people are out of the promised land. God, in order to bless us with all of his great power and blessings and the great things that was done in the early church, he must get us back to the promised land. That's God's plan of salvation is get us back to where we was in the first place. God sent a Moses down in Egypt, going down there with a mighty hand. Look how ridiculous God's salvation was in that day. Going down in Egypt, there was a wife riding on a donkey. Going down there to deliver yeah, God's people yeah. with a crooked stick in his hand. Yeah, yeah. God's salvation is always contrary and ridiculous yeah, to the natural yeah, mind. Yeah. You can't figure out God's salvation. Yeah, yeah. Your mind, your little finite mind, is not capable of interpreting God's great yeah, eternal yeah. mind. Listen, there never was a word that Jesus Christ spoke that was idle. Every word that Jesus Christ ever spoke had a meaning and it was eternal and it was about your salvation. Look how ridiculous God's salvation looked. Even in Moses, way back in Moses, that was God in Moses. That was God's salvation in Moses. And there they were down in Egypt, lost as lost can be. But God had given a promise, I'll save you, I'll bring you out of there. And there was God's salvation going down in Egypt, hid in a little 80-year-old fuzzy-faced preacher with his wife on a little donkey and his children followed along behind him. And all he had to do it with was a stick in his hand. Amen. I believe God's arm was Moses' arm. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. And he went down in there and told Pharaoh, Let my people go. The Lord Jehovah has appeared to me in a burning bush of fire. Let my people go. So that they can turn me upon this mountain. Let them go. He began to speak the word. God, Moses' mouth was God's mouth. And if you didn't hear what was coming forth from Moses' mouth, you didn't hear God. The only way you could hear God was find the one that he was in. <laughs> Moses brought him up Egypt, out of Egypt by a mighty hand, by a pillar of fire, by a cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, by signs and wonders and miracles. He watered him from a rock. Two million people and all their camels and goats and chickens and everything else and children. It wasn't just a little teeny creek or a little... A fizzle of water coming out of a place, but it was a mighty river of water. Paul said that rock was 
Christ. That rock was Christ in the wilderness. There to the saw the great signs and the great wonders of the Lord. But I wonder in that among those two million, could we say, as Isaiah said, who believed the report? There was a report going on. The report was coming on. And little did they know that God was asking a question, who's going to believe this report? And to whom in this mixed multitude of billions is the arm of the Lord going to be revealed to you? Notice that when they got out in the wilderness, God revealing his great salvation through his mighty arm. Who was it that was going to believe the report? Who was it that was going to understand and see God's salvation revealed? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed to them that day as they stood out there in the wilderness and the armies of Pharaoh? Pharaoh said, I've made a wrong decision. Let's go back and, and get the prisoners and bring them back down here. I've made a mistake by letting God's people go. And when they come up after him, and the children of Israel seen the armies of Pharaoh dead after him, and they begin to cry and scream and cry, Oh, my, we're all going to die. We're all going to be killed. Pharaoh's going to kill us. Here comes all of his army. He sent out all of his soldiers that he had in Egypt, all the great horses and chariots, all the great soldiers. Here they come, just jarring the ground. The earth was shaken on the impact of all that. Horses and men are, are running full speed trying to catch the children of Israel. And there the children of Israel was hemmed in. Hemmed in. The Red Sea was before them, and the armies of Pharaoh dead behind their heels. And the church got out on their face and began to scream and cry. Why did they begin to scream and cry? It's because they could not hear the report. They was not hearing the report with a spiritual ear. The Bible said, you have ears to hear, let him hear. They wasn't hearing the report right. The arm of the Lord wasn't being revealed to them. Did not, why did not they think back of the great pillar of fire that turned the Nile River to blood? Why did they think about the frogs? There had never been any frogs before upon the earth. There had not been any frogs, but the prophet of God said there'll be frogs. And brother, in about 10 minutes, they was 10 foot deep all over the land. They was jumping out of the beds. They was under the bed covers. They was in the stoves. They was in the, the washing places. They was in everything. Can you imagine going in your house and a, and a little prophet of God speaking, there'll be frogs in Connecticut? Brother, when God spoke it, your oven would be full of frogs. Amen. Your bed would be full of frogs. Amen. Your whole house would be full of frogs Amen. and you couldn't kill them. They seen the mighty hand of God. They seen God's great arm of salvation. But here they come to a time of testing. Everything, all the circumstances look bad. A great sea before them. How was they going to get over it? They didn't have no boats. They didn't have no sailboats. We don't have time to make no sailboats. All right. Oh, we're going to see. We're going to drown. If we stay here, Pharaoh will kill us. Who has to believe the report? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? God was saving them, wasn't he? Well, if God be for you, who can be against you? Why didn't they look at it like that? It's because they never heard the report. And there they was, began to cry out. And Moses cried out to God and and God said, what are you crying to me, Moses, for? Has the people shaken your faith? Has their unbelief shaken your faith, Moses? In other words, what are you crying to me for? Said, speak and go forward. Amen. I'm the God that made that Red Sea. I'm the God that made the Red Sea. Speak and go forward. Why cry thou unto me? Moses come up and got up off his face. He's shouting and praising God. Walked up there before all the church of Christ, but there's two that wasn't crying at all. There was two standing there that heard the report, and they had recognized God's arm of salvation. They knew that if God could turn the water to blood, what will he do with this sea? He'll dry it up before the breath of his mouth. Two of them wasn't crying at all. So who was the arm of the Lord revealed to who was it that heard the report in that day? Two. Moses stretched forth his arm across the sea, and it separated. Moses said, shut up, be still, stand by. Stand still, stop this nonsense. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I believe that's what God's wanting people to do today. Stand still and 
Listen to the still small voice of God's word being revealed. Stand still and see God's salvation. That's what we need to do today is stand still. Be still and be quiet and know that he's God. Stand still and see God reveal his salvation today. Stretch forth his hand. There they stood still. See means to understand. In other words, what the bride ought to be doing today is stand still. God's yes. going to reveal his salvation. Amen. Stand still and see God's salvation. He's the one that's doing this thing. He's the one that promised another Pentecost. He's the one that promised he'd get us out of here. And it's him that'll do it. All we need to do is stand by and see his salvation. And what did they do? They stood still and they saw God's salvation. And even when they saw God's salvation, they still didn't believe it. Amen. What about that? Amen. Amen. They went on up, and you know the story how they come to Katie's Barnea. There was God ready to bring them into his salvation. Here was the real genuine article that he brought them up to receive. Here come, as we said last Sunday, the great word test, the great word Amen. test. And they got up there to the great word test. And what happened? What happened when they got up there? Who believed the report? Only two believed the true report. They said, if God be pleased and it's his pleasure to bring us into this great salvation, this great Canaan's land, then if it be his pleasure, said, let us go up and take it immediately because the people are bred before us. But the others brought back an evil report. And with their evil report, they discouraged the hearts of the people. God never did forgive that sin. He never did forgive that sin. And their carcasses fell in the wilderness. Their carcasses fell right in the wilderness, and they perished, and they're eternally separated from God to this day. Why? It's because they never heard the true report. They could not understand God's salvation being revealed. They didn't understand it. They want to figure out their own way. Notice here that, let me tell you something, friend. If you can't find the right man that God's revealing his salvation through, you'll never see God's salvation. Amen. He said, well, I'll, I'll just go my own way. I think the Lord revealed it to me. No, he won't either. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible did he ever reveal it to individuals like that. God has one man and one man alone. He reveals his salvation to us. These people sitting right today that knew that God was revealing and bringing forth a report through the prophet William Branham. He was the man that God used today. And they thought, well, I, 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 I don't want to follow no man. I'll just read my Bible and God will reveal it to me. That's why they're sitting in ignorance and don't have no revelation today. No other way can you find God's salvation but find the man that Amen. God's revealing his salvation. Yes, Lord. Amen. Everybody didn't follow Moses out of Egypt, died in Egypt. Everybody didn't follow Abraham out of the land of earth, died down there. Amen. Amen. So on down it went with Noah and all down through all the prophets, on down to Jesus Christ, on down to John the Baptist. Everybody didn't follow John the Baptist. Perry! Yes, everybody didn't follow Jesus Christ. Perish. Yes, and everybody didn't listen to what Apostle Peter had to say about it. Perish. Yes, everybody yes. didn't listen to what Paul said about it. Perish. Yes, On down we go. And here we up here right here today. Yes, 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 yes. It ain't no different today. Yes, God can only use one mind at a time. Yes. And if the ministries will line up with the thinking of that one mind, then they'll be in unity. Yes, but as long as they got their own opinion of it, there'll be confusion on out because God can only deal with one mind at a time. Remember what Paul had to say about it. Shut up everybody before it was over. Right. Why? Because God gave him the interpretation of his thinking. You know, you know any mind that's great enough to interpret God's thinking? All right, then when you read the Bible and you try to get the revelation yourself, you're trying to interpret God's thinking. And your mind ain't great enough to interpret God's thinking. It takes the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost wrote the Word, and the Holy Ghost reveals the Word. What's the matter? And if the Holy Ghost is revealing the Word through God's chosen vessel, then there's unity. But as long as everybody wants to go on their own way, then there's confusion. Yes, sir. They fail to see the true report. 
There, look at there. God, to show you that God deals with a man. God deals with a man. Let's look at them. When the battle was going sore pressed, they were sore pressed by a battle. They was in a ferocious battle one time, Israel was. And you know what God revealed to Moses? He said, go up there and stand on that mountain and stretch forth your hand over the battle. Yes, sir. They took him up on a high mountain, and Moses stood up and stretched his hand out. And, brother, from the time of the early morning to the time up during the day, as long as Moses held his hand up, the church climbed over Hallelujah. him. But just as soon as he let down his arm, brother, the battle went against him. I don't care if them men are that sword, boy, I'm killing them. I'm killing them left and right. Boy, boy, I'm powerful. I'm strong. I'm just displaying them left and right. Oh, boy, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And just as soon as their little minds got a little exalted, yes, God just let Moses amen. put his hand down a little bit. Amen. And brother, them little enemies there just raised up and all the yes, And then, boy, they caught on to it. Aaron, Aaron and some of the other elders said, Who, look here. They got his hand and held it up there. Oh, and as long as they held Moses' hand up, the victory was there. That's the way it is today. We gotta find the man that's got the ball and get behind him and roll over this thing and get the victory. Amen. 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 You have to believe the report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Brother, when they seen that arm out there, they ought to know who had it and who didn't have it. As long as he held his arm up, the battle went for him. But when his arm began to go down, brother, the battle went the other way. As long as we try to try to bring the bride into what she's supposed to have today in her own self, we'll never do it. It'll take God's chosen way to do it. God's chosen one. God's chosen time and season. He'll do it. We need to hold the arm up. Hold the arm up. Hold it up before the Lord. Let God reveal him. His salvation. Let the report be revealed. Yes, sir. Who hath believed our report the prophet said. Yes, sir. Everyone gave a report of God's coming salvation. You know that when even God's salvation comes and stands right there before the people, it's still got to be revealed to you personally. Yes, yes. The Holy Ghost has got to reveal to you personally God's salvation. Yes, sir. Why did not the mixed multitude believe the report that Moses gave? Why didn't they believe the report of Joshua and Caleb? Why didn't they after all it had seen? Why couldn't they believe it? They've seen his arm held up down there. They've seen all the signs and wonders and the pillar of fire and the cloud of the day and the water coming out of the rock and the manna falling, falling from heaven. Why couldn't they believe it, Brother Bob? The reason why they couldn't believe it, the gospel that was preached by Moses unto them was not mixed with revelation. And them that heard the message wasn't mixed with revelation at all. Wasn't mixed at all. You know, the Bible said without revelation, you can't please God. And whatsoever is not of revelation is sin. And you know why people don't have revelations? Because they got sin. Amen. That's sin. Sin keeps us away. Excuse me, away from revelation. Yes, yes, amen. As long as we're not willing to forsake sin, you say, well, why can't I feel a blessing? Why can't I have no victory? Because you've got sin. Stop that thing that you're doing and you'll get revelation. Be obedient to the Word of God. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. There's no use you trying to feel victory, have great victory, and have happiness, and be happy over, your, over, over hearing the message and, and thinking you got salvation. Get the sin out of there. Yeah, There's the yeah, trouble. Man. Get the sin out of there, see. Oh, my. God brings his salvation by revealing it through man. Now, if you can't find the right man, you can't find God's salvation. You can find a way. You can find some way that looks like salvation. It sounds like salvation. But when the real genuine thing, time rolls around, you find out that you don't have what it takes to get out of here. You can go right on thinking. See, as I said many times, the biggest deception of this hour by Satan is people think that they're saved when they're not. Did you know that you really can think that you're saved, really believe it in your mind that you're saved, and not be saved? Yes. I mean, I'm talking about Amen. first resurrection. Amen. Those who be justified, he sanctified. Those who be sanctified, he gave them the token, the seal of God. But there's one divided way. 
There's one provided way to get that rest, that seal of God, the token itself, that assures you that you're going in rapture. And you've got to come God's provided way. And that is to come by faith. Did you know that God saved two million out of Egypt? And after they had ate the man from heaven, drunk of the spiritual rock, which is Christ, was shaded by the, the pillar uh, cloud by day, they were baptized unto Moses in the sea. Did you know that after, did you know that they were saved? They believed they were saved. They believed they were saved, but did you know that everyone was lost then? What did you say? You mean to tell me you could be saved and be lost? Yes. They was. Amen. So it goes to show you right there that there's two covenants. Amen. There's the covenant of intellectualism where you say that you're a Christian. I believe yes. I'm a Christian. I accept yes. Christ as my personal Savior. Now you'll have to come before the white throne judgment with that. But those who be justified, he gives a revelation. Hallelujah. Those who have a revelation are justified, and those who be justified, he sanctifies. And those that he sanctifies, he gives them a token. Now, when you come into that, you can't be lost. You can't be lost. Why? Because you're born of his bone. You're born of his bone, flesh of his flesh, spirit of his spirit, power of his power. See? But you can look there, all them two million that come out under Moses. Everyone died, eternal separated from God. Why were the eternal separated from God? Because they did not get a revelation. Because they did not believe the true report and press over and take the token. Yeah. That's why the prophet of God said today, the word of God don't change. That was the type. It's got a type out just like today. And he said, in desperation, you must press into yeah. the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Now people today say, oh, I already got the token when I believe. Then turn around and ask them, when did they get desperate to press into it? What, when did you get it? You don't even know when they got it. Why? Because you don't know when they got it. And Brother Bam said the baptism of the Holy Ghost is an experience. Amen. They can't tell you the experience. They Amen. don't know when they received it. Right. When did they get desperate? When did they agonize and groan and travail in prayer oh, until yeah. God sees them by the Holy Spirit? Bob, you can enter into the token. Get desperate to enter into it. Yeah. See? It shows you that all of it's intellectual, up in their head. That's second yeah. resurrection. Now, isn't that sad? No, sir. We've got to be able to see and understand and stand still today and see God's salvation revealed. Amen. Now, and it's got to come through somebody. Amen. Only way that you can find God's salvation, God's salvation is find the one whom he's revealing his salvation through. Amen. Look down through seven church ages. You've got all 4,000 4, years of prophets. And you got the Lord Jesus Christ coming on the scene. You got the Apostolic Church. You got seven church ages. And then you come up right to William Branham, and on she goes. One man. All the way down through there. And all, all the way that you'll ever find and see God's salvation is to find where he's revealing that, see? And then accept it. See, Jesus said, uh, This is the work of God that you believe on him who has. Amen. Well, we want to do the works of Abraham. We want to do the works of God. He said, all right, you just believe on me because God sent me. Hallelujah. You want to be saved? Hallelujah. You believe what I tell you. Why? Now, you just can't say that. Anybody can say that, but it's got to be the thing. It's got to be the thing. Yes, sir. See, now the Scripture says, what are we going to do today if we neglect so great a salvation? What happened to them when they neglected to hear the true report? What happened to them when they failed to press over Jordan and go into the promised land? No one, the prophet of God, Isaiah, says, Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? See, let's take, all, it's been that way all down through the 4,000 years of time. God picked up a man, and in that hour, you had to listen to that man. Or he was lost. See, let's go down and pick up Noah just for him. There was Noah, the Bible said, was a righteous man. He found grace in the sight of God. And he found grace in the sight of God. And when he did, God spoke to Moses and said, Oh, said the um, repent, Mo, uh, repent uh, Noah that I ever made man. I repent that I ever made him. He says, I watched his mind and I hear his thinking. Did you know that your thoughts speak louder in heaven than my voice is speaking this morning? Yeah, man. That your thought with a, such a pulsate and a vibrate, it booms out right in heaven and the angel there records down all your thinking all day long. Yeah, man. Yeah, Every man. thought that goes through your mind is recorded. Did you know that uh, uh, right now that scientists, as they keep on going, will be able to cipher out the voices that's in the world, in the atmosphere, and go back and pick up the Lord Jesus Christ and let you hear it? The voice of the Lord Jesus, the voice of Peter, and the voice of Paul. What about our thoughts then speak louder in heaven than our voice does on earth? Oh, God, 
Help us to bring our thoughts into subjection. Yes, yes, That's why the Bible yes. said, every idle word that man speaks shall give account of it. And the angel Lord told Brother Bam, said, tell those people that their thoughts speak louder in heaven than their voice is on earth. Oh, God, when we thank you. Yes. There was a great prophet Noah found grace in the sight of God. God said, uh, the violence that's filled the earth has not violence filled the earth today. Boy, and he came to pick up the newspaper and see hell's angels. Why don't you talk about a holy angel like it appeared to Paul? Here's some of those great men. No, they want to talk about hell's angels. Everything's hell's, the devils, and angels, and, and wickedness, and violence, and, and filled with paper. The news, you can't get go no good news anymore yeah. out of the newspaper or magazine. I'd rather read God's good news out of here. Yeah. That's the only good news they are that Jesus yeah. Christ has come. Yeah. See? They found grace in the sight of God. Violence has filled the earth, Mo, uh, Noah, and I'm going to destroy it with water. I'm going to destroy it, and I want you to build a boat. That was a ridiculous thing, wasn't it? It was so ridiculous because they were more scientific in Noah's day, the prophet William Branham said, than it was today. Yeah. They had powers to build the, the pyramids and all those great things in Egypt. We don't have no powers able to do it. They found and dug up where they had greater libraries and greater sewer systems and greater uh, conveniences and greater this and greater that than we've got in our scientific world today. How do you know? How do you know that the hell's angels wasn't buzzing up and down the highway back there? Oh, my uh, children said, oh, daddy, they were no hell. I said, how do you know they wasn't? The Bible said, as it was in the days of Noah, so be also in the second coming of the Son of Man. I believe the signs were just like they are today. I believe they were just like today. I believe they had hell's angels running up and down the earth. I believe they had the same conditions that we got today. Why? It's because God gives you 2,000 years to come to the end of your road. And he brought them to the end of the road. And he said, I'm going to destroy them now because they're not worth saving. Same thing the angel Lord spoke to Brother Branham on the streets of Jeffersonville, Indiana, when he tried to witness to a, a, a couple there. He said, you know the Lord Jesus Christ? I want to tell you about the grace of God in my life. And they just almost spit in his face and walked off. And the angel Lord said, leave them people alone. They're atomic fodder. I'm going to burn them. You look out here today, the invitation and the grace age has come through Brother Branham when people should have accepted the invitation to get out of here and they made light of it and walked away and people today, I don't care who they are, are nothing but atomic fodder. They're no more than a stick that I put in my soul this morning. Fuel for the atomic bomb. Why? Because they couldn't hear the report. Why? Because they couldn't see God's salvation, God's arm, salvation. But Noah did. Noah did. And how many believed the true report in that day? Eight. Eight out of billions of people. Maybe there's two billion for two. I think there's around two point some billion people or three billion people on earth today. How many believe the true report in that day? Eight out of all them billions. Amen. Eight people believe the true report. Why? It's because it changed the difference. Why? Because it was different than their thinking, their intellectual power. Yeah. Their intellectual power tell them it was stupid to build a boat. All that trouble working yeah. every day. But you know, it was a happy event for Noah when that old boat began to float Amen. above the water. Amen. You may go through your trials. You may have your heartaches and your sorrows and people making fun of you for your long dresses, women, and your long hair. But it'll be worth it all when you feel that transformation of the Holy Ghost pass over you and take you out of here. Amen. You're left here with weeping and wailing gnashing of teeth. There won't be nobody going to Powder Hill in the tribulation to see you. My boy's left here on the earth. He won't be carrying the keys to Powder Hill. You and the rest of your children. You'll be screaming and gnashing your teeth, every one of you, that you miss the rapture if you do. Why? It's because the sun will refuse to shine. And the moon will fail to give its light. And terrible plagues and, and uh, horrible monsters will come across the earth. You know that you've missed the rapture and in the tribulation. And then you know after that what's going to happen. You know the hydrogen bombs just any time they're going to drop. And your mom and your daddy, gone. What a horrible thing it'll be. And you think it's spooky now? You ever get out at night and alone? You know you ain't right with God? You know that you're not saved and you're out there and you feel that old spooky feeling. 
That's not a thousandth of a thousandth of a millionth of what it'll be when the Holy Spirit and the little bride leaves here. People will weep and wail and gnash their teeth and they'll be so scared they'll even leave their houses and run into mountains and find caves. Find caves and go in there and try to hide from the wrath of the Lamb. Oh, God, what are we going to do in this hour when we neglect so great a salvation? Water around, live it up, and just have a big time. Oh, God, we need to be saved and born again and a blood fell down in our heart that we'll love the Lord Jesus Christ and forsake the things of the world. Everything of the world will perish. Was there not a mighty prophet among us? Is not his picture hanging in Washington, D.C.? Did not the Holy Ghost come down in the form of a pillar of fire? be saved and born again and a blood fell down in our heart that we'll love the Lord Jesus Christ and forsake the things of God. Everything of the world will perish. Was there not a mighty prophet among us? Is not his picture hanging in Washington, D.C.? Did not the Holy Ghost come down in the form of a pillar of fire? Did not he say the earth would be a burning ash heap at 77? That's only six years away. And we still put it off like we're going to live another 50 years. What good is the house? What good is pleasure? What good is anything if you're not saved and born again? Hallelujah. Oh, God, when I see men and women that heard the words that they've heard, and around the world, nations have never heard the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hear me this morning. This message is ready to leave the United States and get out of here. God, don't take it lightly when you don't get serious with his word. We hear and we hear and we hear and we pass it west around. Yeah. Oh, my God, my heart trembles when I think of what God's going to do. Hey, we keep putting off. Let me tell you something. There's people over there that would stand in line by the thousands to hear the words that you are hearing this morning. You've heard the Lord. Stand in line by the thousands. God will move with great tremendous power in other nations. All them great nations will hear and see a great demonstration of this power of God in this message. But this nation, this nation, we've heard so much preaching that it's just common like sitting down and eating a meal or going downtown or something. We're churchy, we're religious. But when you bring it down to the real genuine blood cell down in the soul, where's it at? You see people sitting in your church and going, hear you say amen, amen, amen. And the first little thing that comes up to grind them a little bit, where are they at? Those that are down on the inside, they don't have no life, no blood cell at all. They're nothing but religious people. And they'll perish with America. They'll burn with a hydrogen bomb. I don't care what's mommy, daddy, brother, sister, who it is. You've got to come to Calvary and get a blood cell down on the inside of your soul. That's why you women, you girls, wear them little dresses that you wear. I think it's a shame for a girl to go around with a, a real thin blast on, blast on, she or Brazier, those underclothes and everything. I said in congregation, where girls underneath panties is showing. Young men around there are burning in their flesh. Now I wonder, God, how can you stand such a uh, thing? Oh. We ain't got enough of God to get enough of material to cover our knees, women. Don't you realize it, that you'll set right there in the tribulation with that? Those that down on the inside, you've never come to a place where you've got a blood cell. Oh, God, we're anemic. We need to come to Christ and get a blood transfusion of the blood of Christ. That'll cause you to tremble in the presence of God's Word. God is a holy God. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Amen. This flesh is nothing but a stinking, putrefying sore. It's dirty and it's filthy. And we need a blood transfusion. Oh, God, you can't save nobody. 
you can preach and preach and preach and people say amen, amen, amen. And the first little thing comes along displeasing. Then they show what they got. Nothing. Just a head full of religion. Oh, God. Not my head, Lord, but get it down in my heart. So that I can forsake the things of the place. Forsake the things of the world. What good is a, a little old prissy body anyway? What good is it? As soon as the spirit comes out of it, nobody wants it. Ten worms in our crawl around and just pussing and uh, uh, muck and scum and gum are coming up out of it. You don't even want to look at that old dead body. You don't want to even touch it with your finger. But God, there's a soul down in there that's worth 10,000 worlds. What do we care about that soul? That soul that's been in this child. Oh, God, we need holiness in our lives. Down on the inside. Get something down on the inside. A blood cell. That blood cell is Christ. And Christ in you, he's holy. He's righteous. Christ in you don't care nothing about the things of the world. Oh, God, that's what's the matter with my children. That's what's the matter with my son, Mark. He's more in love with his keys and power hell than he does about God and Jesus Christ. And he'll perish with the world after he gets and finds him. Oh, is it your daughters, your sons? I can't save them. I weep and cry, but I can't save them. They got to come to Calvary and get a blood transfusion. Take that filth of the world. Powder Hill will burn that devil place, possessed place. It's of the devil. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in the things of the world. I believe in forsaking the things of the world. First, my son, my daughter, whoever it is. And I don't believe in these court dresses. I don't believe in all that stuff. It's not godlike. Oh, God. Send down something here this morning and take these people. You'll perish. To the world, you'll perish. Repent. Repent. Amen. God's sick. Hear me this morning, God's sick. Something's getting ready to happen. The gospel's ready to leave the United States. Oh, God. What do I say, Lord? Hear me. You better not play with God. You better get a blood cell. What do we do if we neglect? To act upon what we've heard. Oh my God, the heart trembles. Terrible. America will be left and weeping and wailing, gnashing of teeth. Amen. Who has believed the report today? Six years of Prophet William Brandon's been gone. Eight years since the seals were open, and people are still groping in darkness, still wandering around in the things of the world. Man, a teenager here this morning that's got a future with two hoops outside of falling in love with the Lord Jesus Christ and forsaking the things of the world. What will you give teenagers this morning in exchange for that soul down in there? Sell it out for a pair of skis or a little short dress? Oh God, my heart trembles. Be long. God's patience wear it out, children, men and women, boys and girls. I know I ain't respond. I can't help it. I'll tell you the truth. Something terrible gonna happen. Amen. There's no one, eight persons, all he's preaching, eight persons climbed in the ark. The rest frowned like a little rat. 
Amen. They hung on to the oak trees. They hung on to the beech trees. They hung on to the pine trees. And when the water kept rising, they couldn't hold on to the pine tree anymore. They couldn't hold on to the oak. And they drowned. Who is that blasphemer, that sign say there wasn't a Noah? There's a Noah. Yes, sir. And to prove he destroyed the water, the earth, just like it is now, when men and women was a bunch of pleasure seekers. Don't we know that's why the devil put Powder Hill up there? That's why the devil put all these things out here today and all these uh, muck and gum of the world out here so that you might fall in love with it. The Bible said, beware. Beware. And that materialistic, pleasure-mad generation said, I'll come in that hour when they're pleasure-mad for the things of the world. I'll come when they're not praying or reading their Bible. I'll come when they've heard and they heard and they heard and they turned it down. I'll come in that hour. Those that are ready, I'll take them in. And those that are still playing around, they'll be out there where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Oh, God. How long, Lord? Noah passed and gone, went on to be with the Lord. Hundreds of years passed by. Hundreds of years passed by. There stood God's salvation revealed. There stood the Lord Jesus Christ. Standing there, he was nothing to look upon. He had no beauty, no beauty, no comeliness that we should desire and, and, and see anything great about him. But there stood God's salvation. There stood the, the, the fulfillment of all the reports. And there stood God. The God that created the heaven and earth there he stood in a little human being. There was a great spiritual mind walking all around him and could not see God's salvation. Could not see God's salvation. But there he stood. And then the scripture says, he came unto his own. Think about it, how God loved them people. He came unto his own his own people. He came unto his own people and they received him not. Oh, my friend, this morning, what kind of a mind have we got that turned down eternal lives? Something that God is, you know, you have to drive and work your way to hell. It's hard to go to hell. It's easier to go to heaven than it is to go to hell. There they stood, trying to figure him out, and there was God's salvation. Who believed the report? Who believed the report? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Why, it got so bad that one day he raised his head up, spoke some words on salvation, said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have no life in you. Right. And all of his multitudes and all of his disciples turned around and walked away from him. Turned around and looked, and he only had 12 people. And they said, Will you leave me also? One poor little brother opened his mouth and tears took down his face and said, Lord, where can we go thou hast the worst of the token? Where can we go? This is our only hope. Who heard the report? Who God? Who was it that saw God's salvation revealed? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Twelve. Yeah. To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Twelve. Yeah. Who heard the report? Twelve. Finally, when it round up, a few more came in, numbered one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty finally believed the true report, and the arm of the Lord was revealed to them. And they crawled up into the place called the upper room. Found out of heaven come God himself with a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. Healed up their little vessels full of God. There was the reward of being able to see God's salvation revealed. To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? 120. 
and they receive the reward. They receive the reward of being able to believe on the arm of the Lord. Oh, how sad it is. Now, what did it say? He was despised. Who was? The revealed word. The revealed word was despised and rejected of man. And they hid their faces from it. Think about it. God coming down in the cool of the evening. And it said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you, Adam? He hid. Hid his face from him like they hid from the Lord Jesus. He said, I'm over here, Lord, hid behind the bushes here. Amen. Why are you hid, Adam? I'm naked. And that's why people are hiding from the revealed word of God when he hear it today. It's because they are naked. Yes, Amen. Oh, how we need this covering of the Lord Jesus. No other covering will work. Who has believed the report today? Yes. Go up before God today like a tender plant out of a dry ground today. In this old dry and thirsty age we're living in when the Holy Spirit's poured out, Jesus Christ has grew up before God again as a tender plant out of this dry thing. <laughs> Grow right up and matured into the full body reveal of huh? God. And there he stands as a root out of dry ground. Here he stands on earth today. Amen. Whoa. Well, those people in Jefferson Bill, Indiana, 5,000 of them standing on the bank when the Holy Ghost descended down out of heaven and newspaper men were there and took the pictures of it and everything, went into the newspaper when that great angel, pillar of fire, come down. 5,000 business men, all kinds of uh, educated people, all walked till I stood there and saw the pillar of fire come down, heard an audible voice speak out of heaven, says, John the Baptist was sent as a forerunner of my first coming, so was my servant William Brandon sent as a forerunner of my second coming. Amen. Where are they at today? Can't find none of them. Jesus said, Where are the other nine lepers that were cleansed? Have they not returned to give God the glory? Save this one leper. When the lepers have been cleansed and the crippled arms have made straight, the blinded eyes have been opened. Cancers have melted away at the name of Jesus and by the touch of the hand of the prophet. Where are those that have returned to give God the glory to see his great salvation that revealed? Where are they to be found today? My heart bleeds and my eyes are filled with tears when I hear the names that's spoken up on the tapes and you cannot find hiding or hair of them today. Oh, how horrible it'll be for people in America. How horrible it'll be. Years no more. Little time I've known the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times I've heard him scream up out of me in my prayers. I sought the Lord and said, I'm sick of it. Oh, Look at these people here. Oh, friend, I don't know what's making me talk this way this morning. Yes, Lord, glory to God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. And you're going to see terrible things take place here in this country. I'll be one day when. Lord, serve and leave you, and you'll be left alone here. You'll never hear that no more. Mm. Oh, oh, friend, help us to be serious. Yes, What's the matter, people? When they see things in their life, they know they ain't doing right. They know they don't act right and do right. And then they won't repent. Too stubborn to repent. They're lost. Bound for a devil's hell. I don't care how long you sit in church. Yes, sir. I only judge you more, make you worse, Joe. Yes, 
Oh, how we need hearts that will scream and cry to God for his have mercy upon us. There's nothing any worse than a hard heart. Stubbornness. People in America are too stubborn to admit they're wrong, too stubborn to repent. And stubbornness is a sin of witchcraft. I got a message on preached in a few days on payday. I feel it coming up. I want to preach on God's paycheck. He's going to hand the people of America a paycheck. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Read my heart. I see the poor young boys over there die like flies for this country that ain't fit to even fight for. Bewildered and scared to death. Sat there in West Virginia, I saw a television show in Shirley's grandmother's house, and I seen them NBC News uh, reviewing them little soldiers there, and it come up, and God turned over in my soul, and I just turned out and walked around. <laughs> Died without God. Yes, Lord. Blood and guts and falling up on the ground, and men and women, babies died, and people in America don't care. Please, your man, just please, your man. Hard hearted. Oh, Nations of the world have been war torn. Mommies and daddies can't find nothing to eat, bark off the tree. Soldiers come in, shoot their cow, shoot their horse, burn their fields with bombs. Babies laying everywhere dead, never heard the gospel. Mom and dad laying in ditches and bullet holes in their brain. Mm. And America's never tasted of it, but she's going to get her dose. Yes, back and forth, this country, the God service passed back and forth, and preachers on every radio and church buildings on every corner. 150, 300 churches in some little old city. And overseas, two thirds of the world never heard the let me tell you something. Brother Bader never took the gospel around the world. He took divine healing. But the apostolic gospel has never been preached into all the world. But they're going to hear it. They're going to hear it. This gospel is going to go into all the world with power. It'll leave America and it'll go over to other nations and people will receive it. I fear God be living in this country. It's awful. What's done it? Pleasure. Too much money in a family. My family would be better off. My boys and my girls would be better off if we never had hardly even bread to eat. No, we're living in a country where teenagers just had 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 100 dollars and just, oh, God, I'm so sick of it. I wish Jesus had come. I ain't mad much God down in me. Grieved. Yes, yes, He's grieved at people in this nation here. Oh, he ain't going to put up with it long. You bear me record what I'm yes, saying. Yes, yes, don't you realize, aren't we spiritual enough to know that when a major prophet comes on the scene like we Abraham, terrible judgment, God's angry. Yes, amen. And it won't be long after he'll roar like a lion. Oh, yes. You'll think a madman's turned loose here one of these days, sir. Yes. Oh. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Same thing today. He's coming to his own through Luke 17, 30, Malachi 4 and 5, Revelation 10 and 7, and his own received him not. His own nation in America, he forsook Israel and threw her into a bed of death. Raised up America as another type of spiritual Israel. And he came into his own, and his own received him not. Came into his own and claimed to have him. Pentecost, so called, and they received him not. Now there's a mixed multitude and I like to ask him, have they heard the report? Have they heard the report? Has the arm of the Lord been revealed to them? Oh, when you look at it like it is, you cry out and say, Lord, 
Will anybody be saved? Amen. With us, it's impossible. With him, it's possible. Yes, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I never, you know, people of America, the problem in America is everybody's too smart. Everybody knows everything about God. Knows, you know, you engage anybody. I went out with to go hunting out in Colorado. Come back, come in a, a place early in the morning about five o'clock. We had breakfast. And there's a state policeman in there, and I don't know. He was looking at this big boy from Kentucky with his big broad shoulders. Had some big old Kentuckians with us, old Levi's and beards on, dirty from being out hunting. And I looked at him, and I, seeing he was a kind of a little feller, and he admired them big shoulders, and I said he was a Kentuckian. They're growing big down there. And I engaged him with the gospel. Instead of him listening, he knew it all. He knew it all. I wonder if he realized who was talking to him. I wonder if he realized. You know, sometimes people don't realize who's talking to him. Yes, amen. Could be an angel unaware. You know what? He knew more about the Bible than God himself did, I believe. Mm. Tried to convince me of things that I knew wasn't even in the Bible. Walked out poor soul. Poor soul. But that's the spirit of America. Can't teach Americans nothing. They know it all. No more than you know. And don't know nothing. Amen. There wasn't one preacher in the United States could tell you how to be born again. Till after 1963. Right. Only one that I know of, and that was the prophet himself. He took the secret to his grave. Yes. Amen. Now, if people are so spiritual, why can't they tell you how to be born again? Because it wasn't given to them. And do you know that in 1963, people still don't know? Since 1971, people still doesn't realize what happened in 1963. Do you realize that Jesus Christ stepped down out of heaven? Amen. Do you realize that Jesus Christ's faith was shown in Arizona Amen. over the desert and Jesus Christ's own faith was in Life Magazine? Yes. Did you know that the Bible said that I will send a man called John the Baptist, in other words, William Branham, before my face? Amen. I'll send him before my face. And my faith will appear. Jesus Christ's faith has appeared over America. <laughs> and we realize what's happened to him. And he set one foot upon the land and one on the sea. Yes, and he had a little rainbow over his soul. Glory, glory. Oh, oh, oh. He come unto his own and his own received him not. And he stood one foot upon the land and one upon the sea with a rainbow over his head and swore to heaven that time would be no more. Amen. Baptist time's run out. So-called Pentecostal time run out. America's time run out. And all time, a lot of the denominations run out. And now I'm coming with my covenant. My feet is feet is brass. I'm a God of judgment. But over my head, hallelujah, is a rainbow. I Covenant with those that have heard my voice. And I'm coming with my covenant, and I'll seal them with the Holy Spirit. Rainbow covenant. Showing that all those in America, when time has run out, there will be a few that will receive his covenant. God is ever true to his covenant. Amen. Thousands and thousands of years have passed since God destroyed the world with water. And every time the sun shines and it rains, there is God's token in the heaven. Amen. God is ever remains true to his token yes, covenant. Lord, there in the trial and time is no more. He stands upon the land, upon the sea, with a little book open in his hand, Hallelujah. showing you that now, Amen. now the plan of redemption is revealed. God's salvation is revealed. You now can hear the true report and see the arm of the Lord revealed. Did he realize what's happened? Yes, amen. He 
here we are today, 1971, six years since the top of the God list, eight years since the seals have been opened. All the great words brought forth from the prophets, all the amens and all the shouts, not one, not one heard the true report. The report was going on, nobody heard it. Year after year, they listened. They had ears to hear, and they heard not. They had eyes to see, and they seen not. Little did they know that that was the shout. Jesus Christ, down inside that little chest, <laughs> using them vocal cords to speak out, your name's Mary Brown, your name's Jim Doe, you done this, you done that. And here, he's descended on down to earth, where he descended down into hell. You are now in hell. You're sitting in hell here. Right. He descended from heaven with a shout. He come from heaven and he descended into hell. Right. You're not living here in a in a place uh, that's heaven, but you're living here in hell now. That's right. Hell is here on earth right now. Amen. And here we sit. Six years since the prophet has gone. Eight years since his seals have been taken from the book. Don't you realize? That God's great mind, God's great secret that he had in his mind before the world was made is now being in perfect today. Whew. You realize that? That that was hid from the foundation world, the secret of redemption. The whole Bible was closed up. Nobody could understand about I don't care who the man is. Hey, man. Man. He didn't know it. Now I'm going to believe God right. said no man understood the Bible. It was a sealed book. Did the Bible say it was sealed? Then if it's sealed, it's closed up, then is it? Oh, you, you can probe at it. You can read it and find little things, but the mystery and the revelation is sealed. Sealed up. But when the prophet of God come, the Bible says it would be loose. Why is the seal loose? Why? Is because Christ has come down with his coming. Amen. Rainbow over his head, and now he's going to keep his covenant with the believers. Amen. He's going to seal them with the hope in the Holy Spirit. But first, they got to believe. Amen. Now, I've hid something from people a long time, but I feel led this morning to reveal. You know, the devil done anything to keep me from bringing this. Uh, that's why I was late. I looked in the, under the beds, under the chairs, I looked everywhere, but my seal book was gone. But I kept looking, and I found it. Amen. Lord, we glory. For your holy name. Thank you, Lord. You want to write this down, I'll give you the page number. Closing now, and I want to read this before I close. Now I'm going to show you why that there's not going to be few make the, only a few make the rapture unless people change their attitude. I'm going to show you by God's word here through the servant of God. I'm going to read from page 458. Now, what's my subject? Who hath believed the report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed God's salvation? Who are the ones that are going to see, understand God's plan of salvation and escape the dread for thing that's upon the earth and going to rapture? Who are those people? Who has heard the true report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Revealed means revelation. In other words, who are the ones that's going to get a revelation of my salvation in the end time when the seals are open? God's plan of salvation was not revealed until after the seals were opened. How many say amen? It was a book of redemption. Redemption means born again, buy back, restore. You can't be restored, can you, before the prophet comes? You can't be restored before the prophet comes, can you? You can't be born without the seed, can you? And the Bible said we didn't have any truth until the prophet came. The Bible said it didn't do nothing until the prophet came. Yes, hallelujah. I can't help that. He yes. asked God got to upset me because said, I said it because the Bible said it. That's right. 
Jesus is just waiting. He's getting ready to do something. Yeah. When the prophet comes, then there's something on its way. Yeah. Yeah. So what you have to do? Just forget about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Don't turn the corner now. Yeah. That's hard to do. Turn the corner. As long as you look in the rearview mirror, you'll be crashed in a telephone post all the time. Yeah. How many say amen? Yeah. You ever got to look forward? Yeah. It's not who starts in the race, it's who that finishes. Yeah. Yeah. Finish the race. Yeah. Don't look behind you. Look forward all the time. You never can you look backwards. See? That's the way Brother Bram said that uh, uh, trumpet there, that frog, looked backwards, looked backwards all the time. That's why he never got to where he ought to go because he looked backwards. He looked forward all the time. See? And just walk with the Word of God. Now I say from the revelation of God that the true new birth, the revelation upon the token, God's plan of salvation was hid. Was hid. And the Bible said all that the prophets desire to be living in this day when the seals would be open, that they might look and inquire into this great salvation. Lord, How many say amen? amen. amen. So now we are the most blessed people yes, that's ever yes, been upon the faith church. Yes. More blessed than the Apostle Paul in the 120. Lord, More blessed than anybody. Peter yes. never did understand it. Never did he understand it. He said, I don't understand, Paul. He speaks things in a mystery hard to understand. Paul said, now we speak, see through the glass darkly, but then face to face. Yeah. We're going to see him face to face. Yeah. We're going to know him as he is, and when we see him, we'll be like him. Yeah. 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 All of it was yeah. locked up. Sealed up. Seal up the book, old Daniel. Is that what he's reading out of the word? Seal up the book, old Daniel. Many will run to and fro in knowledge shall mm -hmm. increase. But they that know their God in the last days when the seals are open shall do great exploits. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Rest Amen. in your lot. It's sealed up and won't be revealed till the end time. Amen. All right. Now, here we are right up here today. Let's see where we're at. Let's see what's getting ready to happen across the United States. Right from the mouth of the prophet. I'm going to read from page 458. I'm going to make a statement before I read it. There's no preacher, no lay member. I don't care who he is how spiritually thought he was. The reason why that people are, are wandering around with no revelation now is because they couldn't get revelation. It was a total impossibility. Yeah, I said total impossibility. Yeah. They couldn't get it. I want to show you the grace of God. You're talking about the amazing grace of God. All right. I'm going to read from page 458. In your seal book, when you read it, I want you to read it over and over when you go home. Quote Brother Brown now. And then also knowing that right among you, things are happening, see. I'm just, I know, I know you don't see it, see. I'm just positive you don't see it. And you say, Brother Branham, that's a hard thing for you to say that. I know it is, but look, let me just say this now. I suppose this is just tape for ourselves and so forth. Let me say this, that you don't get it, see, and you're not supposed to get it. That's right. How many heard that? Right. Yes. Yes. Let me say this, that you don't get it, see, and you're not supposed to get it. So don't try to interpret anything. Don't try to put your own interpretation to it. You only get further away. Let that sink down now. Just take my advice if you believe me now. If God has given me favor in your sight, and you know that them revelations and things, I've been here with you a long time. It's always been right. And now to double prove it right, it hooks right in with a word. So you know it's thus saith the Lord. That's right. It's true to you. Now take my advice as your brother. Don't put your own interpretation to anything. You just go on and live a good Christian life because you will only wind yourself away from the real thing when you do it. Listen now. You'll only wind your, your way again away from the real thing and all of your conscience and know that there's something mysterious happening and it's yeah. happening and I know what it is now. Oh, listen. I'm not saying that. It's just the grace of God that lets me know that's what it is. It's something that's tremendous. And it's gone right now. 
And there's not a way in the world for you to see it. Not a way in the world for you to see it. But so help me with the Bible in my hand. I know what it is. It's been told to you before. So just don't try to put any interpretation. But just just believe me as your brother. See, we're living in a great hour. We're living in a time where they, oh, well, you just be real humble, be a Christian, try to live for God, and live honest with your fellow men. Love those who don't love you. Don't try to make any. You see, you do. You only make it a mysterious something and mess the real program of God up. Amen. Now, so, if the church here are not supposed to know these things, so don't put no interpretation in anything. Unquote. That's worth reading again. Isn't it? If the church here is not supposed to know these things, so don't put no interpretation to anything. You just go ahead and just remember what you're told and live a Christian life. Go to church. Be a real light wherever you are and just burn for Christ. And tell the people that, uh, that you love them. And just let your testimony be with love all the time with the people. Because if you don't, you twist yourself out into something there, and then you're off the beaten track. See, every time you try to do it, you've done that, see? So don't try to make no interpretation, and especially tonight when that seal becomes up in front of you. Unquote. That's the seventh seal. Just don't try to interpret it. You just go ahead, just be humble, go right on the same, pl same plain message. Unquote. Restoration. Seed of the serpent. Jesus' name. Those things. Now, quote Brother Ram. You say, Brother Ram, is that? Now, we being the uh, church of the living God, shouldn't we? Uh-huh. Blank, blank. Well, as I was trying to say, look here, I want to say, well, why can't I? I ought to have. Unquote. Now, let me fill that in for him because... He didn't want to hurt her feelings. Well, we be in a church, Brother Bam, shouldn't all we have the revelation? Well, I'm trying to tell you that you can't get it. Well, now, look here. Uh, well, oh, I, me, Brother Branham, I got... Well, I was trying to tell you. No, remember, I'm saying this for your good. See, I'm saying it so that you will understand. If you believe me now, listen to what I tell you, see. Now, listen real close, children. Now here, now here's a post. We'll call that a listening post. And in it, it's got a radio. And there's warnings and things can be done like a sword in your hand, see. It can pick from the evil or pick from only. As it picks, it gets its message. Now, for instance, to the ordinary man, there's been so much cults and clans rise up over little outpourings of the Spirit. People get all worked up into a bunch of stuff, go out and start another little move, you know, and things. You don't want to do that now, see. Now, just remember, stay just the way you are, and you say, well, the Lord. No, now, just be careful. Now, look here. Let me show you something, see. Did you know there's ten thousands of voices in this room now? Literally voices of people that come in through the electronic waves of radio. Why don't you hear? They're voices, is that right? They're waving right through here now. There's people, forms, bodies moving right through this room. Well, why don't you see them? They're here, actual voices, like my voice. Well, why don't you hear? See, it's got to strike something first to reveal. Yes. yes. Go. See? Amen. Now, do you understand? Yes. Now, just don't interpret nothing. If God wants you to know anything, he'll send it to you. Hallelujah. So just be real solid now. Hold still. Something has happened. And now just be real. You understand what I mean, don't you? And just be. Don't try to make yourself something odd to be a Christian because if you see, you take yourself away from God. If you can understand it, this is the third pool. You should have caught it the other day. So then, there'll, remember, there will be no impersonations like there was with the other two. So that's as far as you should know. Now, just remember, 
that you see now that there's something taking place in this room. There's actual, in this room, angels. Thank you. Angels. Voices. But how do you? You can't. If you can't hear the natural voice without something to send it out, how are you going to out? How are you going to hear the spiritual voice? Now, you might make believe that something's singing this certain song that might not even be there, see? But when it actually strikes the crystal, that it's supposed to strike. Amen. Then it gives the true interpretation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 458, 459, 460. And then you take the seven seals, take them sides of Jesus, and he'll fill the rest in for you. Now do you see, children, the grace of God? You couldn't get the revelation. Total impossibility. Because you didn't have a listening post down yeah. inside. Amen. First, it has to strike God's chosen vessel. Amen. Gift down on the inside. Catches the revelation by that gift. Then if you are supposed to know the revelation, then you'll come in contact with God's salvation. Now, if that isn't the grace of God, I don't know. Don't you see that you can't do anything? Don't you see that you're just totally helpless unless the Lord has caused it? You can't hear, you can't know unless he calls you. So then if God has let you hear the true report, if God has let you see and understand his plan of salvation, then the great grace of God has been revealed to you. Church can't know it. Preachers can't know it. God comes to one vessel that's predestinated with a gift, and that is the grace of God that lets him know it. The grace of God. Let's all say the grace of God. So just stay like you are, and if the Lord wants you to know the revelation, he will send it to you. He will send it to you. And let me say in closing, I thank the prayer that we ought to pray from our heart. Lord, Lord, thrust in. Yes, Lord. Thrust in labor into the heart. Send forth your salvation, your revelation, and reveal your arms because you are slave. I don't mean, I didn't mean, you know, I, you know, when I preach like that, I feel bad. It's just before you know, I just, I just rake you over the cold heart. Something makes me say that. It makes me, when I get through preaching like that, it makes me want to run, hide somewhere. But, old oh, friend, it's so late. Yes. It's so late. Oh, I, I want to see my girls, my boys feel the Holy Ghost. And sometimes I say, Lord, I don't want to leave earth if my children ain't going to go. I say, Lord, what if uh, she don't make it? Or what if he don't make it? Oh, God. Maybe I'd better stay here in the tribulation and try to help them. And see, it's hard. Yes. Oh, would it be wonderful? Why can't we all just please the Lord be right? Honey, there ain't nothing in this world worth nothing. There ain't nothing worth nothing. Why can't we love the Lord with all of our heart, yes, all of our soul, with all of our mind? Yes, See the handwriting on the wall. America's gone. If you want any future, you ought to get out of America and go to Israel. But there's no future in America. There's nothing. Let's bow our heads while our sisters come at the end. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love my own children. I love your children. I love you. I fear the Lord. I don't know what the Lord, oh, he, I know the Lord's angry at, at America. He's angry at the attitude of the people. And, oh, I fear the Lord. You know, it's a prophecy in Haggai. 
He said the Lord shook the earth. But yet there's coming a time when he's going to shake all the heavens and all the earth. Wait, friend, until he reaches his hand down on and takes a hold of the earth and begins to just shove it back and forth. Shake every tall building to the ground. Everything that's on the earth is going to be shook. What good is anything for me? Oh, God. Church auntie won't do no good to you. Only but a blood cell down on the inside. A blood cell. Christ. Born within us. Word upon word upon word upon word. And then sealed by the great covenant of the Holy Spirit. Friend, when William Branham stood and the seals were open, he introduced Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Face appeared in the desert. And when William Branham stood, he introduced Jesus Christ, the revealed Word of God, to you and I. Oh, friend, let me, with, with my heart, yeah. let me plead with you this morning. If you know that you don't have that blood cell down on the inside, oh, I, I, if I could, I'd walk my knees. I'd do anything. But, oh, don't turn it down. Please don't. Don't do it. With her head bowed down, her eyes closed, let me pray for you. Don't let the devil keep you away from God's salvation. There ain't much time left. See, you're going to accept him. You're going to accept him before it's over. But see, then it'll be too late. Now, today, today, what will you do if you neglect so great salvation? Those of you accepted, don't put off straighten up your life. Straighten it up quickly. Days are fleeting by. These are the ones. You're sitting there, sinner. You're lost. You're fighting the war in yourself. Why don't you just give up? Do like you do in the war when the battle's too great for you. Stick up your hand, raise the flag, I surrender. While our sisters play, I surrender all. Listen to Brother Bob this morning. Please yes. don't you hear and receive this morning. Don't walk away from him this morning. Just surrender all. Just stick up your little flag and wave it. I surrender, Lord. I give up. I give up, Lord. I give up. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. Just think of that a minute now. Remember, the camera's on you. The camera's on you. Your thoughts is banging right in heaven now. The recording angel's writing it down. Now, there you sit. What you going to do with Jesus? Jesus on your hand. Can't wash it off your hands. He's on your hands this morning. What you going to do with him? Are you going to accept him as your provider way? Are you going to turn around from the ark and walk away? Is there a one here this morning? You want to raise your hand and say, I want to receive him this morning, Brother Bob. I'm tired and weary of fighting this thing. I want to receive him this morning. Is there one? God give grace to raise that hand. Is there one? I want to receive him this morning. I want to receive him this morning. God bless those hands. He sees them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another? You want to raise your hand? Don't fight it, friend. Don't fight it. Receive him in your heart this morning. Accept him in your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, oh God, woe is me, Lord, woe is me. I dwell among a people with unclean lips, Lord. Oh God. Lord, what makes me say these things? Oh God. How long, oh Lord, will I put up with us here on this earth here in America? 
Oh, God, six years has gone by. And Lord, that rock went up into the heavens, Lord, and has spoken thus, saith the Lord, judgment. Oh, God. Lord, we got children that saved, Lord. Oh, God. Please, Lord. Just a little longer. Please, God, deal with our children's hearts. Save them, oh God. Save my children, Lord. Save Brother Branham's children, Lord. Save all of our children. God, save Jimmy Grayville, Lord. Save Danny Shaw, Lord. Save all these people's loved ones, God, quickly, Lord. May they be saved, God. Lord, we don't want to see them left here, God, in this tribulation, Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I beseech thee and stand in the gap this morning. Have mercy, O oh God, upon us, Lord. For thy wrath, Lord, is kindled, O oh God. Lord, I feel the wrath of God hot upon the back of my neck, Lord. Oh, my Father, God, let every man, every woman, every boy and girl get a hold of themselves this morning. Those that are playing around, Lord, and doing things they shouldn't do. My God, this morning, may they cleanse that thing from their heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask.
Naked I come into this world, but naked I ain't going out. I'm either going out of here with Christ wrapped in Jesus Christ. If I go out of naked, heading for the judgment. Oh, friend. Let me tell you something. If there was at a drugstore today, a scientific drug that they could shoot in your arm, that would make you live 200 years, you couldn't get near that place. Amen. Amen. You couldn't get near it. You couldn't get near it. Here's the Lord Jesus Christ standing this morning. Give you eternal life. Never to die. And you don't even have to punch your arm to give it to you. Think about it. Free. All you have to do is say, Lord, I receive. You say, Well, I don't know whether I can live it. You can't, but He'll live it for you. He'll live it for you. I'm persuaded that Jesus Christ is all we need. Oh, I feel after this morning, friend, it's late. Yes. You know that you've never heard your pastor talk like that. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jesus, I feel as it says, the wrath of God blowing down my neck. Yes. Remember, you said it here. You know, you know what's in your heart. You know God's speaking to you. Yes. You know God's speaking to you. You'll give account for that too. Amen. And he pleads with us and pleads with us and pleads with us. But there will come an hour when he'll never touch your heart again. You'll never shed another tear. You'll never have no desire whatsoever to get right with God. It'll leave you. Friend, I'm a, I know what I'm talking about. I've seen a man with big muscles, big shoulders, big chest, stand on his hand, walk on his hand, do flips in the air, go away a pile of high construction of steel, tough, real man, 25 years old, and I've seen God call him. I preached to him under my door one night, said, preacher, something happened to my heart. Said something down in there, 
something like something spoke in my heart. Felt funny down here. I said, I've never had that feeling before. I said, my friend Jack, don't turn that away. I said, that's the Lord Jesus. And he went away crying. I said, give up that whiskey, boy. Come out of that thing. Let me baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He walked away. A few nights later, come and knock on the door again. The doctor tore the door down. I went out there and there he stood. Big old muscle guy. In a prime of you. Real man has pride in his manhood. Tears dripping down his face. I said, what is it, Jack? Rager, that thing come to me again. Oh, I said, please don't turn that away. Please don't turn that away. Don't do it. I said, you got a wife and all and children. Don't turn that away, son. Please let me baptize you. Take this tape recorder and listen to prophets say, please. He cried and he walked away. And you know what? Just a few days later, I come out in the yard and he cussed me. And I said, if I be a servant of God, watch what happens to you. But I didn't say it out loud, but it come out and I shut it off. He started to tell his wife. I walked in past my wife, went to my bedroom, knelt down on my knees. I said, Lord God, see what that man's done to me. In a few hours, a few hours, he was taken to the hospital in a coma with a blood clot in his heart. I went to his bedside and I said, Jack, my friend, do you know why that you're laying here dying? Wouldn't even repent. Couldn't. They buried him. Friend, you can turn him away for your last time. Yeah. Right. Don't do it this morning. All you have to do is say, you don't have to worry about where you can live a life, not just the I kept him as my provider. I just accept him provided ways. That's all. You don't have to say, well, I'll quit smoking, I'll quit drinking, I'll quit cutting. You don't have to do nothing but accept it. That'll leave in its time. It'll leave. You don't look like Christ overnight. Just say, I accept God provided ways. You'll do it, Lord. I accept it. You'll do it. Now, if there's a man or a woman here, God spoke to your heart. Well, I think, be a real man and a real woman. Walk up front here and take my hand. Let me baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus for all them sins that hang on. You'll be the happiest man and woman in your life. Take 
the Lord Jesus. Take his provided way. He's all you need. Jesus Christ is all you need. He'll live it for you. garment he had on, that old dirty, filthy garment, blind in an old garment, and he said, who was that, who is that just passing by, Jesus of Nazareth, and he cried out, thou son of David, have mercy upon me, have mercy upon me. You know what? Who do you say it is passed by? Jesus of Nazareth. Have mercy, thou son of David. Have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy. Rose up and left his old dirty garment. Never needed it no more. God, be praised for his mercy. God is tender mercy, tender mercy. Just of course now, Jesus, in sweetest name I know, will let you go. Jesus, Jesus, so we die. Let's just stand your feet while we sing it to And he's just the same. And his holy name. That's the reason why. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Oh, friend. 
My heart goes out. My heart goes out to people this morning. My friend, how could you ever resist such a call, such a Holy Spirit? You know, it's sad. See, we don't realize our day until it's over. I remember Brother Billy Paul and Brother Bradham's wife. And they said, Daddy, let's go back to Jeffersonville for a meeting. And he looked at them and said, what for? Shocked them all. He said, what for? If I go back to Jeffersonville for a meeting, what for? So I go back there, what do you do, Paul? You're back in the office talking on the phone, talking to somebody. What do you do, meeting? You're too busy outside talking to women. Where are you, Lois? You're out there in the car taking care of the baby. What for? And he looked at him and said, What for? Shocked them all. He said, What for? If I go back to Jeffersonville for a meeting, what for? So I go back there, what do you do, Paul? You're back in the office talking on the phone, talking to somebody. What do you do, Meaty? You're too busy outside talking to women. Where are you, Lois? You're out there in the car taking care of the baby. What for? You know that breaks my heart. Yes. What for? A prophet and a pillar of fire. Yes. And he didn't recognize who he was until he passed by in the castle. Yes. Yes. Oh, God, yes. help us to realize. Yes. Help us to realize what we're hearing and how we're living in, friends. Oh God, save Brother Branham's children. Save them. Save our children. Think about it, friends. Think about it. Jesus passed by and he didn't know it. Will it be that way again? Let's pray that it won't be like that. Have mercy, Lord. God give us men and women in this assembly that will stand in the gap. That will plead with God for mercy. Save the people, Lord. I say it's a devil that's bound the people, wound them up in this thing here. Need the power of the Holy Ghost to break the unbelief. Now let's bow our heads. I'm going to ask Brother Carlton McGee to dismiss us in prayer. Take this holy reverence and the fear of God home with you. My heart struck with fear this morning. I fear before the Lord. Woe is me. Woe is me. God bless you, dear brother and sister, friend. I would that I could do something for you. Individual thing. You, you got to find.